Hi guys, my name's James, welcome to Plumber Parts. Today, we're gonna to be changing over a standard 150 center bar mixer valve. There's millions of these throughout the UK and throughout the world. But if you wanna update your one to being all digital and everything, you probably thought you'd have to whack the tiles out the back. Well today, I'm gonna to show you how to do it with Aqualeaser's new beast shower without having to change anything on the back wall. All we're gonna to have to do is drill one hole in the ceiling and have good access to the ceiling void above. Let's get on with the video, guys. It's a game changer and remember to hold tight. Let's do this. Before we get started with this video, I'd like to ask you to click the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's really important and helps the channel grow. Anyway, let's get on with the video. So this is the problem we're trying to solve. You've got a 150 millimeter centered, standard, I suppose you call it analog bar mixer valve, okay? And you want to have a digital shower installed in place of that, but you don't have the necessary skills to do anything with the tiling at the back, do anything with the wall, but you're good with a drill. And you think, wow, I can drill a hole the ceiling surely they can do this job here all right but we've got a new product that's just come out that's going to allow us to do this changeover without having to do any damage to the wall at the back so let's get on with part one unboxing right then so we've got two boxes that we want to look at let's firstly have a look at the aqualisa quartz something you guys are going to be pretty familiar with already so let's open her up dee, 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 dee. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. So we've got our main control box. This is something that is gonna be controlling and automatically mixing the hot and cold water. We're gonna pipe them into there and then we've got an outlet there. We've already got, very helpfully, some valves as well on that that have got little arrows on them. You know what, I could actually fit them. I could fit that one. Oh look, a bit of water as well. Sorry, I just wanna say, water, when you take one of these out, is a very good sign, because it means the company that makes them properly pressure tests them with water before sending them to you. Uh, so we've got a little arrow on here, as you can see, just on that. And I would just push that on there. And look, I've just done some of the install already. Next thing you just wanna look at on here is that we've got standard twin and earth flex on that. Um, so you're going to want to know how to get that wired into a plug or a 13 amp fuse spur, okay? Um, we've got the destructions. Oh, I've got a little bit wet already, but these are really important, guys. You've also got things like your warranties in here and the user guide for the app. If you want to right now, you can download the app um, and have a look at that. Without even buying one of these, you could do that and have a look and see how they work. Don't throw away the installation guide, read it, take it in, inwardly digest. Other than that, we've got, and this is the cool bit, we've got our standard Aqualiza bottom piece on here, standard riser, and then out of the top of that, we've got a little bit of magic, haven't we? We've got our feed pipe going down into the Aqualiza quartz and also our signal wire that will go back and talk to the control box here. After that, we've got general stuff that you always get when you buy showers, you've got a nice flexible hose as well. We've got the beautiful handset that I really, really like actually. Aqualiza make a really good handset. I love it very much. Yeah, that is a lovely shower head, that is. Very, very nice indeed, very thick there. We also get what I call gubbins, little screw pack and all that sort of stuff. How lovely is that, okay? Gubbins on there. And then a few fixy brackets as well for this going up and a couple of extending pieces as well for those fixy brackets should we need them. So that's that bit. Now let's have a look at this new piece. Check this out. And we call it the exposed extension rail, but it's the quartz retrofit shelf. That's what we're gonna be installing. That's the main bit that I want you guys to take in today. So we've got this big retrofit shelf like this, that's gonna be going exactly in the place of that and allowing us to move that standard old bar mixer shower over to a new, up-to-date, modern Aqualiza shower. So cool. So, you've seen what's in the box. Let's actually get on with installation. So, the first thing that we want to do is turn the hot and cold water feeds off. I'm not gonna show you how to do that in this video because every installation in every house is completely different and you could be scrambling around under the floorboards for hours looking for that valve. Fortunately, here, I've done all the pipe work so I know where the valves are. Nice lever valves everywhere, nice and easy to do. Once you've done that, we effectively just dismantle our old shower in the way that you normally would. We take off our handset, like so. We'd undo our bottom hose, like so. One thing I would recommend you do is when you're taking these out, keep the old rubbers, all right? If they're in good nick, shove them in your toolbox, they'll be handy for later. Next thing you do, normal sort of stuff. This is all very basic. We'll be taking off our caps, taking off the old riser. That is effectively what we're gonna be doing here. Whip the old riser off, out of the way. 
easy peasy in it when you know how. Now, I know I'm not doing this on a full installation in some house somewhere. It's easier for me to show you this accurately if I do it in the studio because we can get, you know, I don't have to ask the customer for a start. All my customers are fed up with me filming in their houses, so we always do it in the studio now. Just want to make sure that we've turned everything off and our pressure's okay. Just do that by doing that. And look, we're just releasing the pressure out of this pipe work here. Make sure we do that first, then we can turn this back off. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna slacken off these two nuts at the back. Grab yourself an adjustable. Let's get that in the back like that, and then just gonna slacken that off until it goes nice and loose, hand tight like that. Most of these you're gonna find aren't really tightened up because they're tightened up onto rubbers. And whoever fitted it beforehand should know that and go, oh, it's on rubbers, isn't it? I don't have to tighten it up like mad. Um, and then we're just gonna take this off. like so. We're getting really far with this job already, aren't we? Just by taking the valve off. Give you an idea as well as to how easy it is to take off bar mixer valves and change them over. So now what we need to do is we need to just cap these two off. The caps are not supplied by Aqualiza for this, so you're gonna have to get yourself some caps and that's it, the pipe work is done. And look, all we've got so far is look, one hole there and one hole up there. And I know what you're saying, how is he gonna cover them up? In a minute, I'll show you how. Just stick around. A little plumber parts tip for you here. Those little washers that you take out when you're taking the old bar mixer valve off, you can reuse if they're in good condition on the inside of your caps. So you can buy these little three quarter caps here. These are three quarter female caps. They'll fit in there just nicely. I know they've got a gauze on them, but why waste them? Make the job a bit easier for yourself as well. Pop those in there, and then all we're gonna do, wind them on there like so. I mean, they're probably watertight just by me doing them up by hand. Not because I'm insanely strong, I mean, come on. But <laughs> because rubber is, I mean, this is the thing that people get wrong so many times is they over tighten rubber fittings. It's really annoying. But we're still, still gonna give them a little nip up with my lovely set here. Just so you know, all the tools that I use in my plumber parts videos, these beautiful tools down here, you can get on the Amazon store. Links to the Amazon store below. We've now got to a point where we've taken off the old valve. If these are gonna be supplied by a separate water supply, different from the Aqualisa Quartz Control Unit, you can now turn the water back on and test for leaks and everything should be fine. Now we can move on to the next stage and that is installing the Aqualisa Retrofit shelf on here to cover these up in prep for our quartz installation. So a closer look at the shelf, we've got a decorative piece here. Now you probably see this has got protective plastic on there to stop that getting damaged. This is all about covering these up and giving us a nice point at which to install the quartz controller in a few minutes time. Uh, I'm just gonna pop that down here on the floor. We've got our underside of the shelf as well. As you can see, all chromed, gonna look beautiful when it's installed and finished. After that, we've got a straight coupling installed for 15 millimeter pipe and also an extension piece. So if we've got a higher ceiling than what we've got on the install job that we're working on, we can put an extendable piece in like this. This is just the chrome outer piece. That's really, really handy to know. So if you're working in, usually older properties tend to have higher ceilings and you know now that you've got an extra couple of feet here, pretty much, that's gonna be able to get up into that ceiling and make sure that the job works okay. And that is effectively what we've got in the box here. All right, so this is very, very easy part of the job. What we do is we've firstly, gonna install this. Now look at these big cutouts here and the multiple amount of holes that we can use. You can use the screws supplied if you want. You know what I'm like on this channel. I like to use my own screws. One thing you could do to really sort of bomb proof this install is run a very small bead of clear silicon across the back here and that will stop cascading water going into the back of that. Not because there's any risk of it leaking into the wall or anything. You're gonna hope that someone's already done these well already, but it does just stop water going into the back of this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this on like so. These should actually be level, just sat like that. But the best thing you can do is, now the slots, there's big wide slots on these, so we can just pop this in. We're just gonna pop my little level on here. Look at that, boom, lovely and level. Right, then we've got a little screw that goes in just here, and then just spend a few minutes making sure that we get this properly installed. Clips like that. 
just going to pop that on here and then just do this screw up. And now that is fully installed on there. We'll leave those decorative covers on there. Now we can move on to the real fun bit. We've taken all that stuff out, haven't we? We're now ready to actually just install the quartz in a normal way. How cool is that? Right, so we're now ready to install our quartz. Now the one we're doing today is a quartz blue, but I'm gonna be able to show you some of the other decals and fascias as well in this video at the end. So you know that there's a whole range of different styles that you can choose from as well. One of the things I would say now is really read through all of the instructions to the end of the job. Don't just read one bit then the next bit then the bit after that read all the way to the end because at the back of this book here there's a bit you're going to want to go and do before you do anything else now that is find the page that is called positioning template and then what you're going to do is you're going to cut that out i'm going to do it with a standing knife but i recommend you do this with a pair of scissors but i like living life on the edge cut that out like that and then what we can do then is we can actually pop this just on here, like that. So we've got the quartz blue, okay? That's what we're putting in today. Now, you could just pop a little bit of tape on here or whatever, just to hold it up. It's totally up to you. Even a bit of blue tack or something will probably do the job all right. The first connector you're wanna, gonna wanna get is one that's got this little dimple in the back of it. That is gonna go into the hole in the back of this piece here. You've got a hole just there, and that is gonna sit into the back of that, just like so. And the point of that is to stop this from being able to twist around the whole unit once it's installed on the wall, okay? One thing as well, I just make sure, we're gonna pop this on here, swing that round out of the way. I just wanna make sure, look, that's a nice height there. We do have extension pieces, so if you want a different distance off the wall, if it needs to come out further, you've got those steps so you can extend it out like that. Another thing I would say as well, before doing this, it's, it's actually, this is a handy little trick to do, is just to make sure that this, is up here, out of the way. Once you've got your holes marked, you can obviously drill and plug and then screw, or you can screw like I'm doing now. You put the special foot on the back that you can just see there with the chrome, and then that plastic sheath over the top, pop your two screws in, and then a decorative cover will clip over the top nice and neatly. Just remember what I said earlier on, keep the retainer for the handset above this bracket. Otherwise, it won't be in the right position for later on in the job. It's the same process for the top bracket, but of course, this time you're going to use a spirit level to make sure you've got your upstand up nice and straight, because even if that's out a little bit, it's going to stick out like a big saw thumb. But it's in exactly the same way and really easy to do. So say we do want to extend this, it's very, very easy for us to do. Now, it's a little bit of a faff because we've got this long wire here. I mean, the long wire in itself going to the control unit is an advantage, especially if, say, there is a floor above here, like an actual living area, but you can get the floor up. You can then run your pipe work along with the wire to maybe the airing cupboard or up into the loft to a place where the control box can sit nice and happily and work okay. What we do first is we pull off this slight bit of decorative fascia bit here and also pull off the covering for our pipe and then we take all that back we just got to do this a few times guys it's just life so we take this bit off that little bit there yeah and we put this bit on how about that pop it on there like that and just thread it all the way back through and that'll effectively act as a coupling for us so now that will sit over that like so. The next thing we do is we put our straight coupling on here. Now, if you want to, you can just wet this a bit. We're just gonna pop that on there like that. And that's that done. Now, if you want, you can cut this bit back. It doesn't have to stay at this length, but we're gonna keep it at this length for this. I'm just gonna pop a little extension of 15 mil on here. As you can see, we don't have a ceiling here. I'm not 100% bothered about showing you how to drill a hole in a ceiling or how to measure it off. It's very, very easy to measure out your center, but sometimes ceilings are made of, of different things, aren't they? And they're all different to drill into. So look, this bit now will go up through here like that, nice and happily. We can pop our extension piece in, just like that. And the next bit we wanna do is feed our wire through our pipe. I'll tell you what, while you're at it, if you're pretty sure you're spot on with how far it is through, pop this on as well, okay? Pop the decorative cover on, and that'll make good whatever hole you drill for your ceiling. It'll cover it up if you've made the hole, you know, a bit, a bit massive, <laughs> as they say. Just be aware, there's gonna be a bit of a pinch point just here, so just be nice and careful with it. 
lay the pipe flat, like around there like that, and then you can pop that over. Like so. Quick tip, if you want to be super sneaky, use the wall bracket to cover up the join on your extension piece. Also remember that the copper extension is not supplied. Well, if you wanted to, you could put the handset on now. So let's do that really quickly. I do love their shower heads, they're really nice. Easy to clean as well, because they've got that nice rubberized end on them. If you've got hard water area, although what I'd usually recommend, obviously, is to get a water softener, yeah? But some people aren't gonna do that. They just won't listen to their plumber. This end goes on this bottom piece just here. Make sure your O-ring's in. And then, of course, before we do anything else, feed this through our retainer. And then we press the little button down on here to allow us to tighten up. I like that, that's a good idea. Oh, I like that a lot. I like that a lot, Aqualisa, that is nice. Little things like that, when you put, when you've got the shower hose bit sticking out in front of you, that is uh, as sweet as a nut, as they say. Right, so look, we've done, we've done the bit. We've now, look, we've got this retrofitted piece in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna install the digital box on the wall just up there so you can see all the pipe work. It's gonna look absolutely brilliant. But you're gonna see us do that in quick time, okay? We're gonna install that digi box. It's gonna take us probably about an hour or two, but while I'm doing it, I'll talk to you as well about the thought processes I'm going through and also some of the things that we should do to make sure that this installation is safe, compliant, and will continue working long into the future. Let's get on with it. So the first thing I think you should take notice of in the instructions is the fact that the orientation of this box needs to be in one of the orientations described in the instruction manual, i.e. either laid flat or horizontally like it is now. You do not want it on some sort of slope or anything like that, it's not gonna like it. Also, don't do any soldering where any flux or solder or any heat can get near any of the components of the shower, the box or the quartz included. Make sure you clip everything nicely as well so it looks absolutely beautiful. Another thing is that the smart valve has the ability to be able to talk to your Wi-Fi network so you can use the app, which I'm gonna download and show you in a few minutes time. So make sure wherever you are, wherever you're about to install it, whip your phone out and make sure you get a reasonable signal on your phone's Wi-Fi so then you know that there's a good chance your box is gonna be able to connect to that as well. Lastly, try and get it as close as possible to the shower. Most people are gonna install this on the ceiling above or in the airing cupboard next door. But look at that, lovely job there, nice and easily done. That was about an hour's worth of work there that you've just seen in a few seconds. So now we've got all our pipe work in, it looks absolutely beautiful. We're just gonna pop our controller wire in. Number one, the smart valve and the controller can be separated by 10 meters using the easy to install data cable. The connection from the quartz controller into the Aqualisa smart valve is effectively the same as a telephone connection or an ethernet connection but one thing I must stress is you cannot cut off and make this piece of wire shorter it's just something you don't even want to try and do okay I'm not going to show you how I did the 240 volt mains connection but you could do it into a plug connection making sure that it's got a 3 amp fuse in it or a 3 amp fuse spur right then guys hopefully you've seen how easy it was to do that pop this up on the wall make sure it is in one of the multiple orientations you can fit one of these in we've got our valves in the right way We've got everything nice and clipped. I probably won't clip the power cable to the pipe just because I don't do that, but you're quite all right to pop it onto the pipe here that feeds down to the shower because it's gonna be doing that anyway inside our downpipe into the shower area. One little tip I would say you should do now is just to shut each one of these valves, slacken off our two nuts here and just purge some water through. Just pop a towel around everything here. Make sure that you purge the water through so we don't get any debris or bits and pieces going into the Aqualisa smart valve unit. All right, we've gone from an old school 150 millimeter shower valve, bar shower valve, to a digital modern one, and we've not even done anything to the wall. All we've effectively done is drilled a hole through the ceiling, popped this on the wall, and piped up to it. Ain't that hard, is it, really? So you don't need knowledge about tiling. I know some plumbers are scared of tiling, me included. I hate it. So then, gang, we've got this beautiful beast installed. What I'm gonna show you first are just the standard functions on the front that you'd normally use when you just jumped in the shower and you don't have your phone and thus access to the app with you. So look, what we do, we just press this button here and the baby comes to life just like that. <laughs> what an absolute beauty. Do you want to turn it up, get hotter? 
we can turn it up. What happens is, is that ring flashing on the outside means it's trying to attain the temperature you've set for it. That's coming through lovely and warm now. And then we can turn it down again. That is effectively what we can do with this. But the other thing we can do, if I just turn that off, is the fact that we can hold this button down. If we hold it down for over six seconds, it will then go into pairing mode. So then we can then get it converted over to the app. So the app is really easy to set up. Get your phone, open it up and scan the QR code. Or of course you can search for the Shower Me app within the app store or wherever you get your apps. Once you've downloaded it, open it up and follow the really easy instructions on how to set it up. Do a little profile picture if you like, just like this. And then you can set up your shower. Very easy to do guys. I'm just showing you a simplified version of it here because it was so easy to do. I just followed the instructions. One thing you're gonna have to do first is to actually join the network of the shower. And then when you do that, you tell the shower your Wi-Fi network's details, and then your shower will automatically get onto your Wi-Fi. It's a really simple way of doing it. Once you've got the shower all set up from here, you can do things like drag to set the start time, which I think is really cool. How long your shower's been running, you can see water usage. You can get tips and tricks on the app as well. You'll also be able to set it up with Amazon Alexa or Google Play so you can voice activate your shower. You could lay in bed and go, Google, start the shower, please. I've got to go to work. Oh, no. Also, you can add different showers to it as well. If you had a shower with a bath diverter, you'll be able to use that within this app as well. So if you wanted to fill the bath up to a certain level, so the bath is all ready for you to jump in while you make a cup of tea, you'll be able to do this with this app as well. There's loads more features on it, guys. I suggest you download it and have a look around it yourself. Just so you know, the handset has four outlet functions on it and a really handy eco function as well. So it's gonna suit all different people, even those who wanna save a little bit of water just by twisting the head on the handset. Nice and easy to do. Also, there's more than one decal available for the Quartz Smart Retrofit Shower. Today, we've installed the Quartz Blue, which, which I really like because it's got great simple front end functions, but also everything that you'll get within the app as well. Plus the Quartz Classic Smart that you guys are definitely gonna recognize, and also the Quartz Touch, which is packed with extra features. For instance, you can change the temperature of your shower from within the app. Plus, at the time of recording, Aqualiza are just about to release dual outlet retrofit kits, so you'll even be able to have a nice pan head as well. Right, I've pressed the preparing shower button. Stuff's happening here, look at that, the shower's come on. How about that, let's turn it off, shall we? Let's turn the old beast off. Look at that, how quick was that? That is so good. Guys, really, really impressed with this system. Really, like, how easy it is to install, especially since where we are at the moment, we've got a Wi-Fi router that works off a 4G SIM card, and it still works really quickly just through that on my phone as well. This thinks it's just talking to a Wi-Fi router, this beast up here, but it's actually talking to a Wi-Fi router working over 4G. Really, really impressed with this. I, I think a lot of you are gonna say some there, I always try and head off negative comments at the past, as you guys know, and a lot of you are gonna say, well, all all that's really different about this from an Aqualiza Quartz is the fact that there's this nice shelf with a, a nice little bit to put your smellies on. I mean, you could put your smellies on that there, couldn't you? And there's even little hooks under here as well for you to hang your, your loofah off. I think it's called a loofah. Is it called loofah, Emily? <laughs> what people are going to say is, oh, all they've done is come up with this bit and this bit here. Yes. No one else has, have they? So that is good. I, I love that. Um, I really do like the, the way they do things anyway over at Aqualiza. As you can see, there are many different fascias. Really, really easy. So effectively, this piece at the back here will work for all of those different fascias that we've installed today. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope it's given you a better idea as to how to do this job. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel as well. Hit the bell, all right? And if you want, you can join the Ale Army where we do live streams every Thursday evening. Or of course, you can come along to our live Q and A's that we do every so often, where if you've got a question, you can use Super Chat to ask us a question. You can send us photos or videos relating to your question to our email address and we'll answer them as well live on air for you. So thanks ever so much for watching guys. Check out Aqualiza's website as well. Details in the description below and I'll see you in the next video. Remember to hold tight. I'm just gonna turn it on again. Should we just turn it on? Here we go, boom. Preparing the shower, it's doing it now. So look, the beast is working now. Or, you know, I can change all the settings on the head and all that. Press the old stop button and the shower will stop.
And there you go, stop just like that. Absolutely fantastic. Beautiful. WhatsApp's probably going to be the place as well that I'll share all the behind the scenes stuff. So what I'll probably do over the next few days, some of you this will probably matter to, some, probably most of you this won't matter because most of you are behind the scenes members already. Um, but we'll keep the, 